I looked at the group, and there were 14 to 18 year olds, and I saw two of them who were 18 years old. I couldn't believe that we were that age and we started. 1951. Melvin was preparing for a Carnegie Hall debut, and uh, I was a student at the same school in here in Manhattan, and he needed someone to sort of rehearse the second piano part for the Liszt E-flat Piano Concerto. I had two pianos at home, and I volunteered to do it, and uh, we've been playing two pianos ever since. So we started the team that summer, and in the summer of 51, we began. We spent the first five years of our lives, uh, as Bobby Short would say, as saloon players. Uh, we went from Atlantic City, and then we went to Dayton, Ohio for 10 weeks, and then we went to the Boca Raton Hotel and Club. One of our great engagements was in Cleveland, we were told we we're going to be playing in a magnificent restaurant, Cleveland's Best, and we were going to be booked there for four weeks. And we got to Cleveland, and the restaurant was beautiful in one part of the room, but we weren't playing in the restaurant. We were playing on top of a bar. Mm -hmm. And I had a big grand piano, and Norman, because I was the bigger of the two, he decided he would take the little spinet. Behind. Behind the and piano. the only reason, way I could see him was to look up the mirror and I could see when he was going to begin and then we'd start playing. I will never forget the feeling after practicing classical music our whole lives and so on, when they opened the bar and we had to go under Underneath. all the bottles of liquor to get back up to the top of the bar. And we were young. I was a milk drinker. We got a marvelous review from a fabulous critic there by the name of Windsor French. And uh, he said that uh, Steckman and Horowitz, uh, they were teaching taste, technique, and style to the people of Cleveland. And we used that quote for 40 years on all our brochures. They didn't know it was from a bar. And we dropped a lot of our leaflets in New York to managers and so on. And, uh, a manager, Kenny Allen, called us and he said, you know, I'm interested, I'm going to send Phil Pryor to Dayton to hear you. He'll be coming in tonight about 10 o'clock. He auditioned us after 1 o'clock in the morning. We finished playing. We played in the bar, Brahms, Chopin. And he said, if you guys will get a truck and two pianos, you've got a tour next season. We didn't even drive. We had no license. And we got into the truck with two pianos, and our first date was Ada, Oklahoma. Melvin had never been in a truck in his life. And the greatest thing we learned was how to take two Steinway concert grands, take the covers off, turn them upside down, and put the legs on. And there wasn't a concert that Melvin and I played at, uh, that he didn't sit under the piano for the first 10 years, and Jimmy the pedals on, and I banged the legs in. But we did play Uranium City, Canada, mm -hmm. where we were traveling in the town by dog sled to and from the concert hall. That's right. You we're know what you left out, though, you know? You skipped something that we waited three years to do. We were already... That's right. We played the Radio City Music Hall. We were the first two piano team to play the Music Hall. And uh, we were there with the film Tonight We Sing, which, was, which was the life of Saul Hurok. And... Uh, we were there for 84 performances and never saw the movie because we were always going around on a circle on the stage. We only became what we are because of playing thousands of concerts. When the two of us started as a duo piano team at 19, we had 3,000 outlets available to us to play recitals. Out of the 3,000 towns, there are now 350 left. Competitions are important for these young people to have the opportunity of playing. <laughs> 